Hello all, my name is Krishnak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, uh, we will be continuing the Flask Web Framework series. And here you can see just in four days I was able to upload this many videos. So uh, you can definitely check out the playlist. In today's videos, what we are going to do is that I am going to do some kind of video streaming from my webcam. Uh, and uh, you know, try to open it in our browser itself. Suppose if I am running a, uh, a Flask Web Framework, at that time in that specific application we will try to stream uh, the video from our webcam itself uh, and then we'll try to see how to do it now this was the most common question that was asked by many people so i really wanted to take this particular opportunity so that i create this particular video and we'll try to create it completely from scratch i'll try to write the code line by line and try to show it to you and after this in the next video we are also going to do something like face recognition where we are going to use open cv right so here also we are going to use open cv but over there we'll try to use some kind of computer vision work where we will probably use some kind of hard hard cascade uh, xml things and all so please make sure that you watch this video and yes please do subscribe the channel if you have not already subscribed so let's proceed now first as we go ahead uh, from flask i'm going to import flask and render template uh, and I hope everybody knows why it is used. The second uh, template that I'm going to, sorry, the second library that I'm going to use is CV2. And remember, if you have not, if you do not have CV2, first of all, go to the new terminal. Over here, you can see it is activated your environment. Here, you just write pip install open CV Python. Okay, so this is the first thing that you really have to do in order to use this particular package. Here, you can see that requirements are already satisfied at my side. So I'm just going to clear the screen. You can do this through this way also. You can also make sure that you have the requirement.txt and keep on updating each and every libraries that you are actually using, okay? So uh, I'm also going to import the OpenCV and then now I'm just going to create the app over here. Use underscore underscore name and this and then finally I'm going to use camera, okay? Now this camera, we should be able to access our webcam. In order to access our webcam, we will be using CV2 not video capture right and whenever we give zero by default which is our webcam that we are going to use it um, now many people may be talking about uh, krish how do we access a remote webcam which is situated somewhere uh, remember guys for those kind of webcam you all usually have some kind of ip address and uh, username and password so i'll try to show you that example once i have one handy webcam with me so definitely i'll also show you that specific example all right now let's uh, uh, do one thing let's first of all create some simple app dot route okay that is what i'm actually going to create uh, so here is my app dot route okay uh, in this app dot route first i'll take the root page i'll go to the next line why i'm getting this error sometimes i don't understand why do we get all these things okay uh, app dot route it's perfectly fine right so after this, I'm just going to define my function called as index, right? And in this particular index, I'm just going to say return render template. And in this, I'm going to call my index.html. I hope uh, you have some kind of index.html because, and remember this index. If you're using render template, you have to use this index.html, which is present inside the templates folder. So if I click this, this is a basic HTML that I've actually written. Here I'm just going to create one H1 and basically say live streaming. Okay. So that you'll be able to see it. Perfect. Uh, till here, everything is good. Okay. Now let me go and create another app.route. Okay. And this app.route is basically my, uh, probably I can take an example as slash video. Okay. And uh, here I will try to define my uh, video function. Okay. Which will be returning something from here so what we have to do is that guys remember now suppose this is my index.html okay so i have to create some html content over here and this particular html content you know what it should be able to do is that it should be continuously able to hit this particular url to take the streaming data in this index.html and that is what we are actually going to do okay so let's first go and see that how we can actually uh, probably call all this particular information because see how do we display any kind of video frames right uh, video frames are nothing but images it is a combination of images so i really have to create some kind of windows over here so that you will be able to see that particular frame so i'm going to create a div tag again i'm not using any kind of styling guys okay uh, just to keep it simple and here i'm just going to use an image source and image source 
will right now be blank because I need to fill this image source with the video frames from my webcam. That is what we are actually going to do, right? I hope everybody is able to understand it. Now, after this, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to quickly write width is equal to some, some width size of that specific image that we really want to display. Suppose I say 50% and uh, I will basically close this particular image tag. Now, understand from where this image source of video frames will be coming, right? From this particular function, right? So in this function, I have to write something. I have to basically provide all the frames that I'm actually getting from the webcam and give it back to the index.html. And that is the reason I really need to call this particular function over here, right? So here, what I'll do is that again, I will be using a functionality called as URL underscore for, okay? And this will basically be having my function that is video, right? So URL underscore uh, for uh, with this video is basically going to call this particular app.route in short and it is going to call this function now let's go and update like what we need to really pass from this particular function right because we need to pass something so for this we really need to pass one thing that is called as response so this response is some kind of response that you are actually trying to send in a continuous manner so here what i'll do i'll just say return return response okay and this response will call some function I'll just define this function for right now. Okay, this function, you know, will be generating or will be taking the frames from my webcam and it will get, it will basically pass this entire response back to this index.html. Because the index.html is calling already this particular function, it is going to, sorry, this particular route, it is going to get all this information over there, okay? And remember guys, whenever we really want, need to pass some functions, we have to set some MIME type, okay? I hope I'm pronouncing it right or, <laughs> I'm just pronouncing it in the right way. So this MIME type, I'm just copying and pasting it from the Google. This is basically the multi-part X, X mixed replace boundaries equal to frames. Some kind of information we are actually trying to pass. Remember, I'll talk about this frame, what this frame is and all uh, as we go ahead and write the things, right? Now, this is the code. And again, I'll give you all this code. Don't worry about it, but please focus over here. Now, one condition I'll say if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore here i'm just going to say that app dot run and here i am going to put debug is equal to true so one issue that i have done is that i have to use double equal to perfect this is fine now let's go and create this particular function this function i'll say it as definition generate underscore frames right so this will be my function now this function what it will do first of all um we will try to read this right we'll try to read this particular camera over here so here uh, you know i'll just say camera dot read function and remember guys uh, where this function is basically present this function is already present in the cv2 you know when we are doing the video capture when we do read it returns two parameters one is first parameter either we are getting any kind of frames or not if we if we are getting any kind of frames it will be success okay so i'll create a boolean variable like this success comma and this will basically be my frame is equal to camera dot read so two parameters this gives either success or frame success is basically like a boolean variable over here if it is true that basically means we are able to read it from the camera otherwise we are not able to read it okay so here i'm just going to write this particular comment where i say read the camera frame right perfect now after this what we are going to do i'm just going to put one condition I'll say if not success, uh, if not success, then I will just say come out of it. I don't want anything you to do it, right? Else, else, um, after this, in this particular else, okay, what is this error? Let's see, break can be used only within a loop. Okay, so, but I have actually, oh, sorry. One, one, one additional change that I actually have to do, guys. Remember, we really need to read the frames continuously, right? We really need to read the frames continuously. So I will be putting my for while loop over here. So I'll say while is equal to true. Okay. And probably I'll just quickly press one tab. Perfect. So while is equal to true, you know, so we are going to read this particular frame. If 
not success that is the reason why i like visual studio a lot guys it tells us whatever issues are there and probably any kind of markings are there and all you know some 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 kind of zigzag markings will come if your code is not uh, properly written so that that is the reason why i i love visual studio code you should also try it out okay it's amazing now after this what i am actually going to do is that guide uh, uh, over here i am reading this particular frame right so if it is if it is true like if you are actually getting this frames i will try to uh, encode it first of all so this is the thing that we really need to do we have to encode this uh, entire entire frames in the form of jpg or png it's up to you okay and this will basically be my frame okay so the this frame i'm actually taking it i'm going to encode it in the form of jpg format or png it's up to you and this will return basically two things one variable i'll write it as return and the other variable i'll write it as buffer so this is actually going to convert this into a buffer if you go and see this particular definition here you can see that it encodes an image into a memory buffer right so here first of all we are going to give the extension that is jpg png and then here the second parameter we are basically going to give the frames and remember whenever we get this kind of buffer then only we will be able to pass it uh, uh, in, in 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 some uh, in some uh, over here for this kind of image source will be able to pass it you know so usually whenever we are passing from a back end to the front end in the form of buffer it will be able to uh, capture it and display it in a proper way okay so all these things we have actually done till here i think till here one more activity that we have to do is that uh, convert this buffer back to bytes okay so and remember guys in in if you are if you know computer vision we always have to do all these things and finally we have to return this entire frame now guys understand i cannot just use return keyword over here why because if i do return that basically means it will just capture one or two frames and it will give it over here in this particular function where i'm calling so here first of all let me uh, call this particular function over here right so here i'll be calling this generate functions now what will happen see this if i call this function and if i just write return frame over here what what may happen over here just imagine what may happen over here if i just say return this particular frame something like this if i return this frame okay then what may happen there will be a very disaster result because it will just read one frame and it will give it over here and it will not go back over here so in order to go back over here one of the keyword that we basically use is yield keyword okay yield keyword is pretty much amazing we use along with a generator uh, many people used to ask me tell me some of the practical scenarios of yield keyword guys now this is one scenario that i have actually uh, you know told you because here you can see that here i'm just passing the frames over here but again it has to come over here back to this function select the next frames and give it back right so over here that is what we have to do and before sending the frames guys we really need to select uh, some more features in this and the feature are something called as content type uh, where we are giving the image extension also so i'm just going to copy this and again i got this from my open cv documentation page okay so here we have to provide this content type information with my image or slash jpg as a hard coded string along with the frame in this particular way we really need to pass this particular information again you may be thinking krish why you have suddenly written this it's it's just some kind of uh, uh, things that you really need to do when you're passing images, you know, probably when you're working in the APIs and all, sometimes you really need to form this kind of, uh, whenever the images are in the form of bytes, you really need to set it up with this content type when you start uh, passing in the post side. So yes, this is done. And here I have now called the generate frame. Sorry, uh, here I have to call this function. Perfect. Now this is perfectly fine. Now this is actually being called over here. This looks absolutely fine. I think it should be working. So guys, one final change that I really need to do is that here I have just written uh, in this particular way, UR underscore four. But if you remember the Jinja two technique, which I've actually told, you know, we actually have to write like this because again, if you want to use this specific URL, okay. So this is one of the thing that I really need to add. So let's go and see run Python file. You know, this problem will happen. So make sure that you are not recording or not using your uh, webcam for some other purpose. Now I think it should work absolutely fine. That is what my random guess is because of that only because the error that we are seeing over there was related to OpenCV only. So here it is. And here you can see, right? It's pretty much simple, pretty much easy. Uh, you can see my face. Uh, 
and all clear clear and squat working fast because i have a high powerful system altogether right and this is what i use actually to hide my background okay so yeah i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe the channel please 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 do subscribe the channel in the next video i'll try to use open cv and do the face detection by using harkar said sml or try to detect uh, eyes try to detect face movements different different movements will try to see okay so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe the channel if you are not already subscribed i'll see you in the next video have a great day thank you one doll bye bye